The Bliss of the Abyss. Welcome back to The Bliss of the Abyss, finding freedom in the unexplored and the unexpected. I'm your host, Robert Newmark-Jones, and this episode features Eva O'Connor. Eva O'Connor is an award-winning writer and performer from Oganello County Clare. She writes and produces work for stage, screen and radio. Her plays include My Name Is... How do I pronounce that? Is it Saoirse, Eva? Am I getting that right? I've got an Irish passport coming my way, by the way. Overshadowed, uh, which of course was on the BBC. Maz and Bricks, Mustard, winner of the Scotsman's Fringe First Award in 2019. Uh, She's done a whole bunch of things and she's also a really good friend of mine. She's currently under commission to write a a brand new play and she's going to be touring some new stuff. And in this episode, we get into all kinds of wonderful things, not just catching up as mates sometimes do, but talking about all kinds of other things. You know, what it was like um, when we went to Edinburgh many, many times a few years ago now, what what rotting Norwegian shark is like in theory. Uh, Coming up with game show ideas, uh, the science of sleep, handstands, and so much else. This was a really fun chat with someone who loves to laugh, and um, we've been friends for a long time. And Caitlin makes an appearance as well, and I think Eva likes Caitlin more than she likes me. So, all told, there's a hell of a lot of bliss in this episode, and not that much abyss. So, please give it up and enjoy the wonderful... Ivor O'Connor. Four seven two six eight three. Two can kiss me. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry, I have to change my name because I'm number four, four seven, seven two six eight two, three. Six. Of course you are, but of course you are. Which is a little bit dystopian and weird. <laughs> I would expect nothing less. Good afternoon. Yes. How are you, Mr. Robert Newmark Jones? I'm. I am okay. I'm. Uh, you know, coming off the end of a of a bank holiday weekend. So, are you are feeling we all... similar vibes? Yes, it feels like we need two more Sundays. Oh, I know, but what would we do with them? <laughs> <laughs> would yeah, we, yeah. yeah to be, be fair, we probably don't need two more Sundays. <laughs> also, Rob, congratulations on like a year of your podcast. What do you think, huh? I've actually That's done crazy. something. I know. You must be so proud of it, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. To keep anything going for a year, especially this year, I feel like yeah. it's really... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of the few commitments in life that I've actually stuck to, you know? Yeah, and I feel like them. especially this year has been so nuts that, like, Ugh. I feel like having actually, like, routinely stuck with anything is a really great achievement. Yeah, but, like, you're blowing smoke on my mouth. This is just me talking to intelligent and interesting people. You actually fucking write plays and shit, you know? I'm just fucking Well, recording. I try. <laughs> You try and then you also <laughs> succeed multiple times over the Sometimes year. Sometimes I succeed, yeah. <laughs> if uh, if this time next week you're like, why did I say that? Yeah. He got all my deepest, darkest secrets out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, it seems unlikely, but um, yeah, that's that. And we're just going to just, you know, whatever. We, okay. we can talk. Yeah, I don't right. have anything until three. So as long or as short, whenever you have to Do you to think go, I should move background, uh, Rob? I feel like I'm in this crusty bedroom, like... Jink white is better. It's ma- this is mainly it's mainly an audio experience. So whatever you feel more comfortable. The, okay, got, Grant. Well, then I'll stay sitting. I've got my curtain drawn because check this out. Right, look how grey I look. Oh my! Oh. I love your grey hair though. Salt and pepper. Right? I, I, yeah, I don't mind salt and pepper. <laughs> I wish the industry felt the same way, but um, <laughs> fucking industry. I know. Actually, maybe I'm going to draw a curtain as well. This is maybe slightly better. If I start uh, gagging, it's not anything to do with you. Okay. It's nothing personal. No, okay. it's nothing personal. <laughs> I've got these these stupid fucking things. Oh, are you doing um, Invisalign? Yeah, how's except it, it is it Invisalign, going? right? Except yeah. I'm not rolling in it, and Invisalign's like five grand. Yeah. So it's, it's SMT, which is straightmyteeth.com. They didn't even get the fucking verb right. That is hilarious. Are you really sure that you can trust a company to oh, straight my teeth? Fucking <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> I'm just wearing this. And is it is it working though, Rob? It is working though. Yeah. And how much were they? It was like seven hundred quid. Oh my god, great. Yeah. I so, saw you. But know. you did you have crooked teeth, Rob? I still do Not a little really. bit. Did you a little, uh, 
Oh, mm-hmm. right. So you're just trying to move them in, kind of. That's really it. Yeah. 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 Sort that shit out. Um, it's funny because talking to people who've like had braces when they were kids, yeah. which I never did because I was, you know, a rebel. Um, they're all like, you know, oh, yeah, it was horrible. I, I regret it. But then the time I'm talking to them, I'm also just checking out their teeth, being like, but if you had braces, why are there? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why are their teeth so crooked? <laughs> And it's just because yes, we're all basically like 45 now, Rob. So like anyone who like had braces, it's like a long time ago. Right. Shit's changed. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. But the the, the reason I bring it up is because they make me they make me gag. So I've, you know, I legendarily do not have a gag reflex. That's why I'm so good at DT. But um, <laughs> no, but just now I'm just able to sort of make myself vomit if I wanted to right now without doing any of the the business i could just go i can just do it now that's so weird that's not a skill I what has straight my teeth done to you and <laughs> <laughs> me into the oh hobbit i always was oh my god i know i know i know um i want to talk about so many things to you but um okay great well i'm delighted to have a chat also, I was listening to you and Caitlin on the radio. You guys are so cute oh. together. Also, she's got such a good singing voice, Rob. What the hell? I know. I know. She was. She said she was going to be a singer, but then she had the birthmark thing, and it it screwed up her confidence and a crucial age kind of thing. So she, you know, what that stuff's like. Yeah. Just when you hear people like sing a random line of something, and you're like, wait a second, you're really, really good. Like, <laughs> I've got neighbors who sing the whole time and they can't sing at all and they're all they're just constantly belting out like the other day anton bless his heart he sang free falling for three hours in a row and basically just the chorus and really out of tune you know what good for him good I know, for anton. isn't I know. it nice he hasn't lost the joy of music even though he's toned down i wish i was able to be that confident as confident as the one yeah. the only who's coming into the room it was coming in. <laughs> oh my God. Get in. Come on, Get sit down. In. Say hello to Eva. Come hello on. Hello to Eva. Yay. How are you, darling Caitlin? <laughs> How was your amazing barbecue weekend? It was amazing. And we had we had a Hildy and a Matty and Yay! Yeah. And did you have loads of drinks and loads of and uh, too much fun, basically? Oh, my God. Yeah. It was one of those, you know how sometimes you can have a big party and then the next day you're like, okay, I'm up, I'm going to clean everything. That yeah. is not us. <laughs> no. Yeah, you were like, not that. Yeah. <laughs> we just lived in the chaos. Yeah, we're like, this is how, this is our lives now. This is our new life. <laughs> this is our new life. <laughs> we are cats. Guys, Hildy was saying, so are you guys in the on your own in the flat now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, nice. Mm. Yeah. A little pad all to yourself. Mm. Oh yes. I mean, better. you know what that feels like now. Oh my god, live and now I'm like, how did I live with people for so long? Yeah. <laughs> you, you had like the I mean your room was beautiful, but it was in like the living room. Oh yeah, it was a living room. Like it was crazy. And we lived with like on average about eight people at a time because everyone would always be like shacked up with someone. And now I look back, I'm like, we were nuts, but yeah, but that I mean, was, was that it, was our start even back in our early Edinburgh days. Do you remember that? It was. We were all in like one room. We were oh my god, we lived like absolute nut jobs. <laughs> Like one of my friends was like, you still do that, Eva. You're still the same. I'm like, mm, maybe similar vibe, but I feel like we're a little bit more civilized now. <laughs> like, I feel like if I was going to cast a play now, I wouldn't put 13 people in a two bed house, for example. <laughs> I've had a glow up, okay? <laughs> Give me something. <laughs> Give me something. <laughs> Because oh remember, you came over from America, Caitlin, that summer, and we were like, "Well, okay, we're gonna have to give Rob his own room." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Begrudgingly, right. his girlfriend's literally coming from New York. Like, we can't put them into the sardine room. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice place. That was a really nice place for us, not for, for, us. Us. Not for <laughs> us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a good summer in general, though. I feel it was good vibes. That was a great summer. Oh, what play was yeah. that? Which one was that? Kiss me, and you'll see how important. That was kiss me, wasn't it? That yeah. was the one that won the awards and shit, wasn't it? Exactly. Transfer to London and then you were going off to Greece or somewhere Rob on your MA weren't you yeah that's why I couldn't do the transfer. you were just starting in was it central uh drama center yeah. drums RIP is it done <laughs> well they fucking had some blow up with the university and they stopped taking new students I think that was oh like God, really two years ago yeah that. yeah 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 so I don't know if that's changed or if they're still sort of in limbo like they still 
exist. Guys, I'm going to be real creep, but I'm just taking a picture of all uh, of us together so I can send it to Hillary. <laughs> doing it the creepiest way. When she logged yeah, on, I know. she was 423836 or something like that. That was her name. Oh, that's like, it comes up as my no, as my name on every single Zoom call. So no matter who I'm meeting, I have to be like, oh, sorry. Sorry, you're, not, you're sure you're not working for China? <laughs> yeah, literally everyone says that. We all are, aren't we? I'm sure Zoom is selling level. all of this. Hello, oh, China. Hi. Hello, China. <laughs> hey, China. Hi, Bezos. How you doing? Guys, is it roasting in London, by the way? Boiling. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. I'm like outside Brighton on like a writer's retreat for the week in a place oh. called Peace Haven. Nice. Have you ever heard of it? Mm-hmm. It's just like further on nice. Brighton, I mean, but it's like Peace fucking Haven. tropical. I know it's kind of a mad name, isn't it? Yeah. It's sort of overselling it a bit. Yeah, it is. It actually is just like s- suburbia, basically. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> steady on, guys. It's a small town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like a Tesco Metro is its only shop. Mm, that sounds uh, really good. I mean, you know, if you need a retreat, you shouldn't have many things to yeah. choose from. Yeah, like stay. Exactly, right. exactly. Very simple Tesco Metro. <laughs> what are you running away from, though, huh? That's the retreat. Oh, everything, mm-hmm. everything, Rob. I just run away at any opportunity, basically. <laughs> How long is this for? Because you were in Brighton last week too. Yes, I was doing a workshop with, do you know Bryony Kimmings? Do you know her work, Rob? Yes. Yes, I did it. What? What does yes mean? That means no, but I'm not allowed to say no because it's someone. Oh, right. Okay, right, right. I thought you meant that like you maybe used to sleep with her or something. Oh, no. (laughs) Yes. I'd be like, okay, well, this call's done. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Yeah, no, I was doing that in Brighton like two weeks ago, and now suddenly I've ended up almost back in Brighton. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Calling me. That's cool. Can you talk about the project that you're working on, or is it? Super- uh, yes, I. Well, mm, I'm finishing like a spec script for like a solo TV thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to finish a play, um, and I just got asked to do this weird trilingual project. So I'm going to be writing the Irish part of an Irish. Welsh and Scots Gaelic play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think it's called Chuck, which means home. And I don't, it's kind of still early stages, but basically three companies in Ireland, Wales, and Scotland all like chose a playwright and then they put us together. And now we're starting to like do meetups and we're going to, the three of wow. us somehow are going to write a trilingual play. That's amazing. God, that's going to be the most hard to understand play. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's like, I'm not going to that play. <laughs> 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 love it gonna write it not gonna be that thank you yeah <laughs> exactly so no but I feel like um hopefully it will mean that I can like for example go to Scotland go to Wales yeah. you know yeah. anything sort of that involves like lots of niche languages often ends up you get to go to cool places so. yeah mm. for sure there's a town in Wales that like looks like Italy and I'm trying to remember was it, oh yes yeah. is it oh, Port something P, I think Wait, it looks like as in yeah, the it looks physically and the like architecture Italy. and stuff. I really didn't think anywhere in Wales, no offense to Wales. Like <laughs> Gorgeous. Beautiful. What is it? Oh, yeah, Port, Port Marion. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Check this place out. If you I'll, just request, photos, you I'll request think... to go to Port Marion to write my. Yeah. Play. That's what I'm trying to say. You just if be you like, want I a Mediterranean must vibe. Just go here. What the hell? Even the trees are like, uh-huh. why? <laughs> who did this? <laughs> Some Welsh guy in Wales who loved I'm, Italy. Yeah, I'm guessing that they took like a break to uh to the med and they were like can you do a welsh accent I'm, i was about to try but no. i was gonna come out scottish so i didn't i can't do a welsh accent but anyway yeah so if you do end up going to wales try to push to go there mm. <laughs> yes i will <laughs> wow that's what we're going to talk about for the next hour if you're cool <laughs> oh, perfect. yeah just flick through the pictures yeah, I I think I reckon some Italian dude came to oh, Wales. I just saw a mention of a chocolate chip gelato oh. ice cream situation in this article as you were scrolling down. Quick question: so What's your really favorite flavor ice of ice cream or gelato? Mm, I actually kind of prefer like Twisters or Soleros or mm. like Calippos. <laughs> like I'm not actually a really straight up ice creamy person. Are you more I'm a more sorbet like a, kind of girl? Yeah, sorbet. That is literally up my street. Like, if I'm on holiday, I'm like, lemon sorbet, get in. (laughs) (laughs) Because, like, especially if it's hot, you don't want to eat, like, 10 kilos of ice cream sometimes. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't really, I wasn't, like, the biggest chocolate fan, but the fun fact was I went somewhere in Italy, probably Rome, and I tried a chocolate gelato for the first time. Mm. And then after that, I liked chocolate. And I think that... If you try something that is very good quality, 
you can probably yes. challenge anyone to mm. like kind of go back on their views of certain foods unless they're allergic to it or unless it's like something really intense have you heard of loot fisk eva no oh this is <laughs> gonna be fun wait till you read what this thing is i don't think i think if, even if someone gave me the best in the world mm. dried white fish Right. Oh, it's uh, yeah, aged and dried and pickled in lye. This is Gel- actually the thing. gelatinous in texture after being rehydrated for days. Per- hmm, this, no, that isn't this even problem. the thing that I meant. It's like something. Oh yeah. That's like rotted whale that they eat. Well, so far all of the results for lutefisk aren't looking that appealing. <laughs> Killer whale. Who knows it? What? Eva, are you still vegan? Or is it sharp? Yeah, I'm still vegan. Now I'm even so more vegan than ever case. from these I mean, search if, results. Yeah, here it is. Rob's just a... trying to reinforce my beliefs. Here we go. Hakal is the national dish of Iceland. The national dish. Yeah. So it's it's fermented rotted shark that's been dried. Oh dear. Fancy stopping me. Making it an acquired taste, it says. <laughs> acquired taste. I mean, maybe it's like super salty or something. Yeah. It looks it. They're like, if we like, preserve it, we shall eat it. But, I mean, to be fair to them, there were a lot of sharks probably around, you know, Iceland. It's often served in cubes on toothpicks. I mean, it's kind of, it sounds a bit fun. Like, it sounds like yeah, a I think bit of a like, novelty Like stinky experience. cheese or whatever. It's like, yeah. you know, it's kind of like... Oh my God, I can't believe you just Googled rotting shark. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's like, cut, cut to the chase. Doing? Is this how you thought this conversation was going to go? Yeah, Rob's like, please can you log on at 1pm? We will begin promptly to discuss rotting Norwegian shark. <laughs> I'd like to think that that was a lot of my influence. <laughs> You're welcome. But now I have to go back to work. And Caitlin, before you leave, are you writing still loads of poems these days? Just did a big session the other day, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Oh my God, did you? I'm trying to go back into actually um, publishing a chapbook, but I need to get it all together. So I have like the writing, but it's not organized enough yet. If that makes sense. That's really exciting. And do you think, like, do you know a publisher? Or no, you... so that's going to be the next step of like reaching out to friends like you and other yes. friends who have done it and um, figuring out the next steps. But I want it to be like more cohesive first. I have a lot of poetry though. Yeah. So it's not about the content. It's no. about. Well, that's good. I mean, I feel like that's what most people struggle with the content, but you're like, yeah. no, no, I got the poem. But I think that it needs to be like even more content before I start scaling it back. So it's like, cause, okay. Cause every time you keep writing or I keep writing, there's like a new theme that pops up or a new person I should be writing about or you know something yes up. and so I just need to write then like 50 more about that person and this and then I'll scale mm. it back and then mm. and then it'll be cohesive but I'm Yay. hoping by the end oh of I'm the so happy video. you're still writing yeah thank you I'll keep you posted on that yeah please do I'd love to read anything oh I can't believe I got a ping in here yeah it's all about uh, Eva this yeah. <laughs> anyway love you Eva bye bye darling see you later <laughs> I was is it crazy we're so used to zoom now it's like almost normal it's just normal isn't it yeah yeah i had to i went to see some friends the other day like in the park for the first time in i don't know yeah like two yeah. years right because of this stupid thing and uh and sitting on the on the tube like going there i was like god going places really takes a long yeah, yeah you're like time. what a waste of my fucking life <laughs> it wasn't even it was like a half hour tube journey i was like i used to just do this all the time i know now i just turn on the computer instead isn't that bad yeah it is in a way I think also for a lot of meetings that kind of waste a lot of time either side is really good like yeah. meetings of people that kind of end up taking way longer than they should yeah you can get a lot of I mean I think you miss the in-person stuff as well well it, so for me it's like 90% of it I think is is better but then yeah, okay. like say for example I had this audition for for something like I really want uh, right I don't think I'm gonna be able to do because it's going to clash with Caitlin's wedding um she's made of honor no. and wedding you know what life's oh, like it yeah, always does this, doesn't it? yeah 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 but this this audition it was like for a theater gig and i was like surely it'll be in person now yeah. and it was like yeah self-tape and then recalls over zoom and i'm like see now that is just something where just let me in the room please i want to charm you a bit i don't want to oh have to light my space and oh my god totally <sighs> even just for the recall just let me i know you kind of want me let me come in and meet you show you how sound i am yeah. like yeah it's such a difference whereas like you know if I'm just chatting with people I already know or like I know we're just discussing work stuff it's like okay we don't need to yeah. like we share don't the need same to, yeah. oxygen what, what difference does that make and when will you know about the play Rob I, well I mean I already know that I can't do it I mean could you not like 
the wedding is on a, a Saturday in the middle of the run, right. and we go. It would be Tuesdays to Sundays. I mean, yeah, you know, unless they're you like, the we'll, we'll have not I could. So, yeah. so Eva, let me. Yeah. This is a good. This is a good launch point, right? Yeah. Okay. Because it was. It was. Um, it was an Edinburgh that I did with, not with you guys. It was the one where we met. Yeah. This might be actually a really interesting topic to open up. So a really good friend of mine, uh, Jammies, he, I was on his stag and I couldn't make his wedding because uh, I was in Edinburgh with play. And um, the wedding was like the first amongst our group of friends. We have like a big group of friends. We're all still tight. I was still seeing some people there the other day. And I'm still really close yeah. with him. So like, but I've kind of always regretted not being at that wedding. It's kind of have you because it like I guess in my mind it's like well Edinburgh is every year and Jamie's wedding is once, but Edinburgh's not every year. Edinburgh is one every year, and it's every time is different. And if I hadn't have gone, would I have met you? Like, would we be talking now? We've been friends for what a, de- a decade? I don't know. Yeah, We've... literally nearly ten years now. I'd say. <laughs> So, so how do how do you perform the calculus of of working yeah, out? Yeah, it's really tricky actually. I'm doing a show in July, and my friend is getting married in between, and I'm gonna hopefully work it out. Yeah, she's a close friend, but yeah, I would. I think in our industry, we always put work before everything. Do, yeah, and it's quite interesting to hear you be like, actually, maybe that's not a great way to think about it. Like I was talking to someone recently, actually, they were saying that they were at a wedding of an actor there were two actors actually and apparently loads of people couldn't actually come on the day because like their whole circle is industry people so it's real like it's it's tough I don't know I feel like that's quite a good lesson though what you just said I feel like it would make me maybe reconsider or like take longer to decide before I'm just like no sorry busy yeah because that's that's always been my default for for the whole time I've been in this industry it's like well these opportunities they're not going to come around a little bit you know that kind of but I think that is a bit panicky and like famine mentality really definitely like, and also I feel like you can do in a wider kind of scale you can do that for your whole career you can be like no I can't go traveling for that summer because then I won't be around oh no I can't take any time off in the winter months because maybe da, da, da. and yeah. it's like well actually there's so in a way so few perks of our job right. you know that like maybe you should kind of just take those opportunities and normally it's grand like. yeah because if you look I think that maybe can't like at that calmness comes maybe over time as you get a bit older and wiser possibly you can weigh up everything like I literally didn't even weigh it up so it's def like at the time I was just like well I can't go to this amazing wedding which okay that's the worst news ever but there we go it's not it was well you know yes and no you yeah. know what I mean like it would have been great if I was there, but I saw him yeah. the other day and we're still really yeah. tight. Like, okay. yeah, it's yeah, one yeah, of those yeah. things. It's more, but it's more like how you, how you process it, I guess, in your mind. Like, I don't know how useful having regrets are. And I don't, mm. I don't have that many of them, but I definitely have some. And some I occasionally think of still, and it still stirs up a certain feeling in me. Not as strong as it did, but it's, it's, a, it's a shadow of that feeling. It's still residing there and maybe this is like some kind of mechanism to try and avoid generating a new regret yeah oh my goodness what do you think yeah I feel like I don't think about regrets a lot but yeah I feel like well I so I turned 30 so I feel like if you <laughs> all, you already you yeah you suddenly you start to see the world in a different way I sound so morbid but like <laughs> You start, for, I think for the first time, I started to look back instead of forward. Yeah. Like that weird, like I sound like an eight-year-old woman. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? I it's do. kind of interesting. I, yeah, and I don't think I have too many huge regrets either. But yeah, I definitely have certain memories sneak up on me at weak uh-huh. times. So I don't know if they count as regrets or not. But uh, it's, it's hard to know. Like, yeah, they don't they don't eat me away inside like some people you know who are like drowned in misery i do think you know I, it, like, it disclaimer i'm not drowned in misery <laughs> not yet i mean i'm swimming against the tide <laughs> i don't know um thinking about the that edinburgh where we met though mm. was it did we meet first at your show or did we meet doing the reading no we met first rob at um msdf in scarborough 
didn't we? So it was doing the reading. Yeah, it was doing a reading. I met you. I'm nearly sure this is what happened. I met you that week in Scarborough. You were you were doing a rehearsed reading. I, was I doing it too? We were, in it, we you, were in it together because you are still saved in my phone as Eva Wolfgirl, which, you know, yeah, rock oh and my roll. God, that's so funny. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah, we were doing a reading together and I was, I was really impressed by you. I was like, I met this amazing actor. He's so good at the acting. And then, um, yeah, then I was bringing a show to Edinburgh that summer and I just contacted you and I was in Germany because I had gone to do my Erasmus straight after that. And you had, I guess, gone back to London to be an actor. Um, And yeah, then I just kind of went out of the limb a bit and was like, do you want to be in my show in Edinburgh? And you were like, yeah. Yeah, but we did, but we did it, was it the year after then? Because that Edinburgh, we saw each other's shows. Like you were doing uh, Clinical Lies. Yes, that must be it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was the Edinburgh after. Because I, you came and saw my show, I came and saw your show which yeah. was astonishing. Like, it's you're such a phenom. For <laughs> anyone who's never seen Eva perform, it's just, like, it takes... Oh, back. that's such a nice thing to say. Because well, I, mean I really fucking miss performing. Sorry, I shouldn't be swearing yeah. so much on your show. Nah, but I really... Right. um, Yeah, it's been a real... A, a real reminder this year of how much performing like helps you, like, charges you up. Mm. Like, because I do so much writing kind of like a load of people I know have been like, yeah, I was totally happy this year. I was just ticking away, doing my scripts, you know, a little bit more time for deadlines because like people aren't putting pressure on you because yeah. of COVID or whatever. And I was like, I just really found not being on stage like so difficult to cope with and so yeah. difficult to feel inspired from my writing then as a result. Mm. So the two feed each other. Yeah, exactly. And like someone was asking me yesterday, like, oh, which do you prefer? The classic, classic questions. Like, yeah. I really feel like I just... I this year really reminded me that I want to do both yeah. so it feels like it's kind of coming back now a little bit I guess I mean like yeah if you're the mousetrap you can run <laughs> what does that mean if you're the mousetrap you can run <laughs> I'm like, I mean that that? That, that that show can afford to operate at 75 oh sorry you know? I thought you I thought that was like an old saying if you're in the mousetrap you can run well darling like, as they say mousetrap no 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 I wish it was <laughs> as they say in the industry. <laughs> I saw an amazing show. Sorry, I know Please. that you are meant to guide this discussion, but it just I absolutely my head. am not. That's not what it is. Go, go, okay, go, grand. Go. I saw this amazing show, the first one I had seen in the theatre, um, called The Money. Have you heard of it? No. Tell me. Okay, I'll try and recount it briefly. Basically, um, you arrive into the theatre and most people, the majority of the audience are silent witnesses. So as they go, as you're going in, they're like, you're a silent witness. You must stay silent through the whole performance. Mm -hmm. But there's 10 people in the middle at this kind of center table who have bought more expensive tickets and they're called the players, right? And this woman comes out at the start and she hands the players, the people in the middle, 200 quid. And she's like, this money is for you guys to spend. You only have three rules. You can't split it. You can't give it to charity and you have to stay within the law. You've got one hour to decide. Go. Brilliant. Right. So all of us in the in the audience have to stay quiet. Well, meanwhile, everyone around this table starts debating what they should like do with the money. Mm -hmm. Like, I think five of the guys knew each other and we're on a stag party and we're like pretty obnoxious mm. and we're like kind of mansplaining to other people in the group. They're suggesting going to a casino yeah. with the money. They were like suggesting giving to a homeless person, but then they started down this road of real dodgy debate about like yeah. whether homeless people can be trusted. Anyway, slowly but surely people started, basically there was a rule that if as a silent witness, you could buy in, you could pay 20 pounds and the money would go into the pot and then you could join the table. Very interesting. And this 14 year old girl joined the table. Well, she looked about 14. She was like, I'm a dancer on a scholarship and I can't afford point shoes. My, I'm dancing on broken shoes. If I could get this money, it would be like, it would change my life. Like at the moment I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't have the same equipment as my peers. Da, da, da. Yeah. Anyway, they were kind of like dismissive of her. Then two minutes later, this other woman gets up, she buys in and she just kind of like stands there and she's like, I sat in the audience in complete rage. Like you've got this pot of money. You say you want to do use it for something good. This young girl has the courage to come up, tell you her story, like petition you and you completely ignore her, like put her down. She was like, you should be ashamed of yourself. And this woman basically whipped the whole group into shape, 
the stag party guys end up putting in extra money because they like feel so bad about how oh, how gosh. dickish they're being. And the girl left with like 420 quid. Jesus Christ. And it turned out she was only 12. Her mom stood up at the end and like burst into tears and was like, just, you know, she's only 12. And like the girl after was like, I want to audition for the Royal Ballet. And it was just so, it was also, there was not a single actor in the play. It was incredible. That's so unique. It started in the fringe, unsurprisingly. Like, it's the kind of show that if someone said to me, okay, let's come up with this really cool concept and um, there won't be any actors involved, we'll just throw some money into the audience and basically tell them, I'd be like, well, ha- that will never work. It's like so risky. And it is a it huge risk. I mean, it's paid to Amazing play. social experiment. It is, it is a risk. And I'm sure I saw happen to see an amazing day and uh, another day could be absolutely terrible, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Of course. Did you ever see, this sounds amazing though. Did you ever see um, uh, Golden Bulls? No, it's, it's it's kind of irrelevant. It's like a stupid quiz show, right? Uh, you, right. You know, you win money, but the interesting part is at the end, you have two people, and it's a version of a, a of a thought experiment in philosophy um, called the Prisoner's Dilemma. But basically, you have this pot of money, uh, it's fifty grand or whatever. You got these two balls in front of you, and one says split, and one says steal, and right. you get two minutes to discuss what you're going to do you can say whatever you want right you can be like let's just both split if you both pick split and you both say it then you split the money if you both pick steel no one gets it but if you pick steel and the other person picks split you get it the bliss of the abyss hello it's me your host At this point, me and Eva enjoyed a video of an episode of Golden Balls entitled Golden Balls, the craziest split or steal ever. I highly encourage you to watch the video. It's a fascinating thing. Problem is, the audio quality of it is shit. Uh, If you find the video version of this podcast out there in the world, you will see that this part of the podcast is quite difficult to watch and listen to because there is a constant buzz on the video on YouTube. It's still worth watching. It's still an amazing thing, but I didn't want to ruin your earballs with it here. So instead, here is a little interlude. Interlude, 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 interlude. Right now, back to the chat. The bliss of the abyss. Oh my gosh. So it's so compulsive watching these people chat. You know, sometimes they're like... So yeah. would sometimes they like agree to share, but then one changes their mind and says they actually want to split. And then the other person goes, yeah, I'm going to split too. And that's not a rigorous test of character. Yeah. And they're both lying. Um, instead, what he's doing is he is lying. But underneath it, he knows he's going to split. But he doesn't know about that, this guy. So he's like, if I put him through this oh, boot camp yeah. of like morality, how will he fare? And he starts talking about his dad. And he starts talking about like what it means to tell yeah, the truth. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell he's an honest guy. So I think for this guy, it's enough to then take the risk of being like, right, I'm going to split with him then. I think he's going to do it. So if your man there... The other guy, the ball guy, had done steal. He would have got all the money. All the money. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm stressed out. <laughs> I know. I've I've sat, like, watching just this bit of the show. Like, I've seen, like, 50 of them. Because oh it's God, just so... Com- compulsive viewing. Yeah. And you, it's really hard to predict what they're going to do. And it can't, it's like what people say and what they mean and what they do are three so separate yeah. things. And sometimes they align, but almost all the time, they're like, it's like Venn diagrams, right? Wow. Also, people who come up with game shows as well. I'm like, how do they think of them? Like, you think every game show in the world has now been invented and exhausted. But they're always like coming up with new ones. I was Mad. part of the testing panel for a game show once. I've got- what do you have to do? So a friend of mine, Otis, like knows a producer at ITV. So they were like, can you come in and we're just going to road test some ideas? Um, you know, we'll pay your expenses. We'll give you a free lunch. Right. Like, yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds fun. Got nothing else to do yeah. in the afternoon. So we went in there and they actually plied us with free booze as well. So it's not bad. Quite occasion. drunk while you're being a contestant. <laughs> and it, I can talk about it because it did eventually turn into a show, um, but they turned it into celebrities. But the thing is, you you come in there, everyone puts their credit card, whatever 
on the in the middle and then you play right. a series of sort of challenges like one was like okay you text someone and the first person to receive reply you take out your card and the last person their card stays All right so you go through and we actually did it and uh caitlin was quite quick we'll be pleased to oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and obviously we weren't playing for real money but on the show they are and then you go through sort of a series of challenges and the last person at the end then has to foot the bill for the and you're at a restaurant and so as you get out you're like you know bottle of champagne please yes, lobster, lobster. okay that kind of thing. That's quite a good idea. It is. A, it is a good idea. That's how I got made. But you could tell the the, the people, the producers, the creatives, etc., were quite devious minded because you do have to fuck with. People's yeah, you do. Brain. It's like it's all about fucking with people. Yeah. Yeah, which I feel is like that's not that's not the way in which I'm creative. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, there's a certain. I feel like there's probably an an a little streak of that in reality tv as well like the way it's gotten so much more cynical in terms of casting it's like are, are you just like casting vulnerable people at this point yes, you know whereas yes. I, I feel like maybe at the dawn of reality tv initially it was just kind of like a mix of some people were hilarious and some people were just like regular dudes yeah. and now it's like now it's like everyone has to be like almost on the verge of some sort of like mental breakdown to like get cast in a show. Right. And just sort of like so desperately hungry for fame that it's just dripping off them in everything they say and do. I remember the first, the change from the first series of Big Brother to the second. I watched the first series as everyone did when it came up. Yeah. Like, wow, look at this thing. And it was a social experiment. And I remember season two, they were like, so we, you know, we changed it up a bit. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. It was like two rules. I remember it's like, no books uh, and no musical instruments. And I was like, ah, I think I see the writing on the wall for what these fuckers actually want. They're not- so were you? Were they allowed that in the first series yeah. then? So there's these really hey. cool shots. It almost feels like from a different time of like someone's yeah. just sitting in the garden playing a tune. It's like, yeah, that's something they do. Or someone's like reading a, a book and it's like, yeah, of course, that's normal. And then they have they have all the other interactions as well. Yes. Still- so they're trying to make them like go a bit more stir crazy yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's kind of twisted. The most twisted one, I think, is I can't remember what it's called. Did you ever hear about the one about sleep? I thought you were going to be like, have you ever heard of Love Island? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, I mean, that is like in terms of real time impact on the world, that is definitely the most like. Is horrible. sleep one where they deprive them of sleep? Yeah, that is that is wrong. It is wrong. wrong. Is I'm a so lifelong wrong. insomniac, believe me. But I think this might tickle you because so it's whoever manages to stay awake the longest wins, right? Okay, yeah. And well, can you die trying to stay awake? Yep. <laughs> yep, says Rob, being like, I've tried. <laughs> Imagine if that's what you went from I, I, at the pearly gates. God would be like, Jesus, you really? Yeah. There's a lot. Maybe you should just close your eyes and have a nap. <laughs> But yeah, that, that was the thing. They had people working on the show who would like, they were monitoring their eyes. Because obviously, you know, we blink. Sometimes you might have a long blink. And they'd be like, you know, they'd be trying to catch them if they like, you know, held so their eyes closed. So if you went to sleep, were you literally out of the show? Yeah, loose. Oh my God. And then so not only much. that, but they'd bring in sort of like big plush pillows. Or there'd be challenges where you'd have to lie in a really comfy oh my bed. God. And just be like, what? And not fall asleep. <laughs> Oh my God. That's like when you're like in an airport or like, you know, when you really want to fall asleep and you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, when advice. you're doing this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and how, can you still not sleep, Rob? Uh, I'm a bit better now. Uh, Caitlin is a, a calming force. Okay. I'm less yeah. of a chaotic person because of okay. that. Um, so that's, that's part. part I think that's part, actually a right? thing. I think partners, if, when you, end up sharing a bed with someone really calm you can almost kind of take some of their sleep patterns yeah. like over a long period oh of time. I, I completely yeah i think there's science behind that like yeah one of the devices i've got you know because ask anyone who's insomniac you try so many different things <laughs> one of this thing i've got is like this little strap that you put on and it sends pulses uh and the pulses are very gentle but they correspond with sleep the, the the pulses your body has when you're asleep right so it's like called entrainment it's like training your body to be in that state and then you're more likely to fall asleep and does it work sometimes yeah it's kind of so like as you were saying that your voice kind of went a bit slower you were like more likely to fall asleep <laughs> i'm just nodding off now <laughs> yeah 
yeah, it does. I mean, like my younger brother, right? He's like, his sleep is so profound that it's, what's the word? Not addictive, but like. Uh, it's like death. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yes. Good. You can't it's escape. like a coma. We'd be, we'd be on a family holiday coming back. Yeah. And everyone would start to go, oh God. And you know what it would be? It'd be, Jem would be. And it was just like sending waves through the car. It was like, wind the windows down. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you saying his sleep is contagious? Contagious, that's the word. As contagious as death. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's so funny. He obviously got all the sleep genes. He got them all. I don't know what happened to mine. Have you ever read the book, The Science of Sleep or Why We Sleep? By Dr. Matthew Walker. Yes. Oh my God, that book. That book just makes you want to go to sleep like permanently. (laughs) Like, you know, he says at the start, I hope you have a nap while you're reading this book. And I think it really is, I think... It, it helps you realize that there's absolutely no shame in sleeping whenever you can. Yeah. Do you know I mean? Because I feel like I would have, especially through university, hardly never have prioritized sleep, but then would have also been embarrassed about like sleeping in too late or like, mm. you know, like going to bed randomly when you're tired. It's like, no, we should de- destigmatize going to sleep. Yeah. It literally like prevents Alzheimer's, like, all, I, I think like being yeah. sleep deprived, it, like if it's enough, is uh, is akin to being like wasted, like blackout drunk. Yeah. It's like that that much of an effect on, on your, your body. body. Yeah, yeah. He does say in the book that he feels bad. He was like, I think I've also made like anxious sleepers potentially even more anxious with this book, which was never my intention. I'm like, yeah. you could also see how that would happen. Like, yeah. you know, like, do you get enough sleep? I'm a very heavy sleeper, so. Uh-huh. Good. I'm trying to get better at getting more sleep though. But <laughs> um as in, you know, I would can I, you know, I could fall asleep standing up almost. Really? So, yeah. Oh. Are you an, are you able to nap? I'm not a big napper. If you're gonna do it, do it properly. Exactly. Yeah. Do it standing up and do it properly. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the weirdest or most uncomfortable place you've ever slept? Well, I often, ever since I went interrailing, my friend would just lie down in the corridors of the train to go to sleep <laughs> instead of like it instead of trying to cram yourself into a chair yeah. and sometimes since then I have done that on trains like if I'm really tired I'll just like find a patch of floor and mm. I mean it's not like exactly a crazy place but it makes sense mm. to just lie in a flat surface instead of like instead of the the, the chair yeah. yeah exactly that's the thing I'm terrible gotta utilize the floor yeah also I feel like when you're also if you're like a dancer or performer person I feel like the floor is your friend oh, more than like true. it is to normal people you know like we kind of come into rehearsal rooms and mostly we, you'd sit down or you'd like, yeah. I feel like if you're more of a physical person, you're like, well, the ground is to be lied on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I can't remember what the show was, but like, uh, you know, the cast and creatives were hanging around and we were in, 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 in enough of far enough in rather the process that we're all really comfortable with each other and it's our space kind of thing. Yeah. And these like producery types came in and we're like, what are you doing? And we were like, what? But meanwhile, like one of us is lying down with our legs up against the wall. The other one's in this strange squat. Someone's just like sitting down. Someone's getting a massage (laughs) from the director. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Well, you know, you've got to get semi-supine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Very important. Yeah, I miss performing too. Well, look, I mean, uh, you had an audition the other day, so fingers crossed that goes well. Yes. I had an in-person audition. Which in-person is nice. person audition with masks? Yeah. yeah, with masks. And actually, we were meant to go in in groups of people that were in your bubble. So I'd been doing a workshop with a girl the week before. So we went in kind of as a bubble. But it does feel like this weird mixture of either you can't be in a room at all. And that's probably the safest thing to do. Or you're in a room with all these rules that are meant to protect you, but actually probably don't at all. And they're just like a load of fat for everyone. For sure. You know, like it's it's so much, um, you know, what's the word? What Lip service. I know, people don't know what to it's do. It's got to be done, but like it's, it's got to be done, but like. And also a time. biggest thing is ventilation. Well, my mom's, my mom's like a nurse and she's just so big and she actually works supporting at the moment supporting nursing homes who are having crazy COVID oh outbreaks. God. So she's she's basically a COVID expert. She's always like, ventilation, ventilation, ventilation. Like, open the windows, open the doors, da, da, da. And I've been in loads of rooms where everyone's wearing a mask, but there's no windows open. Yeah. I'm like, guys, if there's COVID in this room, these masks. It's not going to. Yeah. yeah. We have to <laughs> anyway. blow the COVID away. Yeah, blow the COVID away. Which is why I heard that actually planes are actually 
safer than a lot of places. Yeah, apparently Obviously. ventilation in planes is good. But yeah. there is, I, I've only taken one plane since COVID and it was not for a fun occasion, but I kind of enjoy flying. Um, but there's this weird moment where everyone's masked at all time. Yeah. Apart from meal times where we all simultaneously take our masks off and eat. And then we all put our masks back up. And at that point, I'm like, if there is COVID here, yeah, we've all got it. Yeah, but it's there not going to pause for lunchtime on the plane. No. And the amount of tests that you have to do to even fucking get on the thing. It's like, but people, like you say, it's lip service. And, and I, I get it. Is it better than nothing? I'm, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm not sure. And Rob, what will you be doing when things end again? Or do you have things on the horizon or things you want to do? Or Yeah. <laughs> It feels yeah. like such a fucking dream because you know I was on the fucking West End. When yeah, you were on the West everything. End. Any sign that's not gonna. That's apparently gonna resurface. come back, but okay. Where we were, that theatre doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I know. That's it's Trafalgar Square probably. Studios, is it? Yeah, Trafalgar Studios. So they, we were the last place there. Um, and uh, oh, what? It's complete. That space has gone completely now. They've combined it into just one space now, made it bigger. So yeah venue still there but not for small shows so another yeah another small venue and that's the thing go. actually i feel like in central london to find like a small really intimate venue where a show could move from like a pub theater if you're not yep. going straight to soho or somewhere else yep. if there's actually not that many no. really small spaces like that so no. it's really shame to hear I know. something like that although going. there's one that's opening in somewhere that used to be like a sex theater or something like that Ooh. Uh, in soho they're going to convert into a, a little i think it's like 120 seater okay which nice. is good news because yeah. yeah like you say the west end is kind of lacking those things it's, it's mouse trap or bust as they say yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh in the meantime what i've been doing either is is this shit i've been i built this thing out of what eight. is this like a full home studio Oh my gosh. All well, this kind of stuff. So this is profesh.com. I know, it's not bad, right? Um and what kind of stuff do you do? Just like loads of loads of audio, radio, podcasting. Yeah, I mean I do that, music. yeah. And then like like voiceover work and stuff. So yeah. Uh, you know, trying to keep creative stuff going while I'm not able to be on stage, which is the thing that I want to do. To be fair, you have a great voice for radio, which when you say it sounds like an insult, it, it sort of sounds like you have a face for radio, but like you do have a voice for radio. <laughs> and a face for radio. And a face Lovely for radio. Babes. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Rob ends the call. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm having so much fun. I feel like I haven't spoken to you in ages, but I actually... I know, it's been ages. I feel like we're um, we're those kind of old friends that go back so far. Yeah. That like we see each other twice a year and it feels normal, but really we probably should make more of an effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're in a new place now, aren't you? Yeah, I moved. How is it? And so this year, because I felt well, it felt like my entire career was on ice, and I was like, you know, as like everyone in the arts yeah. at home being depressed. Yeah. So I decided to learn to drive, um, get engaged, and move house. And it's all so happened. <laughs> wow. Did you look at you. Is this the secret? Are you manifesting your destiny, Eva? What's going on? <laughs> I mean, I didn't think my destiny would be so heteronormative and predictable, <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess I am manifesting my destiny. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm manifesting my destiny, and I wish it was. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's in suburbia in Kent. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you don't get to choose it, do you? Every day I mow my lawn with the scissors. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's um, yeah, I, I guess I tried to be like, okay, how can I enjoy this year or like enjoy right. life this year? Yeah. Like, because I like we were talking about earlier on, I think for me, like everything is so work focused all the time. Yeah. And my life is very much driven by my work. And I think when you work in something like this that requires a lot of passion, like that's mostly fine. But then I think there's also like a bit of reckoning to be done with like, mm, how much does my job define me? Like if we don't work, we have to be able to enjoy the times that we're not working instead of like fall into a pit of despair. Yeah. So I think that is a balancing act. Yeah. Which I've been trying to get a bit better at. I couldn't agree more. Um, ha what, what do you have any like hacks? I remember when the fucking lockdown first happened, one of the first memes was like, 
there was a plague in 1580, whatever, and Shakespeare wrote Hamlet kind of thing. So, you know, use your time productively. And I was probably, I don't know, masturbating at the time or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being like, mm-hmm, I know, I am. <laughs> have, have you managed to, have you managed to, has it dented your, or are you still as prolific I as ever? I feel you like, no. Prolific? I feel like I am getting on top of my stuff again now, like a year on. I think I had a bit in the beginning, I was like doing, I think there was a lot of small project project call outs for different artists being like, you know, write this short play, take part in this thing. We ran like that mini film festival for a bit. So fun. So we did lots of fun little things, but then it kind of got more into the year and I was like, oh, I really miss like I'm trying to get my teeth into like bigger projects and then I felt very uninspired on the ones that I was kind of working on so I feel like I'm getting back on the horse now but no I mean I did a lot of yoga and um I did like some like open water swimming like swimming in the sea whenever Mm. I could swimming in Hampstead ponds you know like trying to get change my headspace and stuff but I don't I didn't I'm not like oh yeah finish my novel you know no so yeah so so no hacks then fuck no hacks, sorry guys. <laughs> sorry, listeners. <laughs> I had. Um, Do you have any hacks? Uh, well, I, yeah, I had. Um, I don't think you've met Stephen, but Stephen Lawton, who wrote One Jewish Boy, I had him on the. Yeah, he was on your podcast. He was on the show, yeah. and he had some some good tips, because yeah, like the day before I spoke to him, I'd got this email at like quarter to eleven, being like, "Congratulations, you've got this voice thing, right?" And I was like, "Yes, oh, amazing." really exciting and I was like so like pumped up it was good news right but I was like excited it was like my first kind of big thing in this new thing that I've been trying to work out and I was awake till four and I was like why am I checking my emails at 11 15 yeah and Stephen had this big thing of like he was a similarly sort of chaotic state and he was like I'm just gonna you know, what's the cliche? Treat it like a job. So I'm going to, you know, have a routine. I'm going to clock in at a certain time. And I think I've read something about you doing a similar thing about like writing in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. I try and I try and write every morning. I try and do, I do like, have you ever heard of the book, The Artist's Way? It's an amazing book. It's an amazing, Sorry. amazing Who's book. It by? Um, mm, I can't remember the name of the woman off the top yeah, of my head. Julia, yes. Uh, Julia Cameron. Julia Cameron. Um, she in the very beginning it's basically like um I think a 12 week program of like kind of unblocking creativity I ca- and she has this thing in the morning which I use every morning called called the morning pages and she says you should just wake up and like pretty much as soon as you can get a pen and a paper and just write three kind of free flowing stream of consciousness is automatic pages. writing is that it- yeah similar, similar I guess okay, okay. like you you're not meant to especially for the first few weeks you're not meant to read the pages at all oh. so you literally just write them and put them away and you can kind of go back to them eventually but like that I think really is a really good like routine mm. to get into and uh, she also has other really good tricks like um she says like you have to take yourself on an artist date once a week and like you have to go on your own so like, like take yourself to the cinema, take yourself to a play, go on a walk and think about, you know, like, and look at nature or, you know, it can be anything, but it's like, I think, I think, um, especially I'm the kind of person who I'm, I'm a very sociable kind of extrovert person. So yeah. I always would be like, I'll, br- I'll bring my friends, I'll go with my boyfriend, I'll do that. And like, actually the discipline of being like, no, you have to like nurture your own creativity, I think is really good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think over the years I have gotten better at getting into kind of like, like you said, like Stephen said, like um a routine, mm. but I feel like even if I do clock off, it's like, how do you actually clock off in your head? That is like something I've never fully figured out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's a that's definitely a different challenge but it's it's almost like for me I, I don't think I'll be able to but it's it's almost like artificially limiting something will it will just have a knock-on effect like if I'm just like okay I won't check my email after 8 p.m then I'm still gonna have thoughts but I'm not gonna have yeah. like those crazy also crazy... Rob you should not check your email after 6 p.m do you think you think that's the... yes like what the hell but what like... about 605 the idea the chance of a lifetime might come you for... I know yeah I don't know yeah it is hard but yeah I think you're right putting those boundaries in place can be really helpful yeah like when I first started working with Hildy she had a, like a normal nine to five job kind of when we started working together 
she was very much like we shouldn't work weekends whereas before then I had always written on Saturdays mm. you know because I'd be like oh well it's an extra day and I'm freelance and, da-da. and I think actually taking the weekends to just have fun like a normal person is something I've done over the last few years that yeah. I think is really important and you're mm. going to come back in a much better headspace on a Monday yeah same if a bit hungover yeah a lot <laughs> <laughs> but you look like you're you're in shape unlike me i've fucking put on pounds during this lockdown how you oh my God, no. sorry also sorry rob you're ageless like you've looked the same since i met you 10 years ago that's not true but you're being nice <laughs> and i'll take it <laughs> yeah i feel like i've stayed i've done a load of yoga and i've done i've like become obsessed with handstanding and roller skating oh, really? and, uh, can you do a like, full freestanding handstand yeah basically Eve. yeah yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll fall over, but I can, like, I my longest one is I've, I've held this for 40 seconds. Which is what? Like, yeah. Not against the wall? Not against the wall. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, th- again, like I say, sometimes it will take me, like, three, four attempts to actually get up there, but I've gotten good at it. And I feel like yeah. it's been a lot of work. Like, I've been, I'm the kind of person who I feel like as long as I can remember in rehearsals, I would always be trying to handstand. Yeah. It was, like, a thing that I was always, always doing. And, like, finally, over lockdown, I, st- I started to actually balance. And it's, like, those those really small things like that or, like, getting better at roller skating, not falling over every time you put them on. Like, the they, they've been my small, like, achievements this year. So. Yeah. Yeah. Shakespeare wrote Hamlet, but you can now roll yeah, the yeah. stage. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Take that. Also, did, you didn't read Hamlet, did you? Look, I have oh. a copy of it right here. An amazing book called by Maggie O'Farrell called Hamnet. And basically, it's based... That, um, Shakespeare's son. Shakespeare's son was called Hamnet. He died. And this, he died. And this is what that book is about. And it is excellent. It is like a masterful novel. And I would recommend it's it. It's a novel. So it's it's like... It's a reimagining based on based on actually mostly Shakespeare's wife um, and then the death of his son. But it's a really, really good book. Mm, that's cool. I'm going to look that up. Definitely. You know, I, I learned the other day there's only one piece of handwriting from Shakespeare. And it's yeah. one signature on one thing. I we feel. actually know so little about him. Yeah. But what do you think about it, people who think that he didn't write the plays? I don't know, actually. Like, I feel like. I don't probably know enough about like Shakespeare kind of scholarship and stuff to know the ins and outs. Well, but, like, sorry, when I booked you for the show, <laughs> <laughs> Shakespeare scholar. Sorry, what, I thought you were a scholar. So I, I guess I'll just delete the fuck out of this thing then. Yeah, I'm just wasting my. <laughs> um. Yeah, I. Do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if multiple people wrote them. It's a huge body of work. It is, and like working in the theatre, you know. Yeah, the writer comes with most of the stuff, but like part of the process is like, what if, what if I don't say Exa- this bit? Or what? How about Ex- instead of like, the, I do, you know, there's all that kind of stuff. I mean, how many plays did he write? He wrote like a lot of plays, and we know so little about him, really. Like this woman who wrote the novel, Maggie O'Farrell, was saying as well that like we know nothing about his wife, really. That was kind of why she wanted to write the book, and she was saying that like, you know she was combing through all this academic research and like all she could find were like a few dismissive lines about his wife. It's like, we, you know, he's so huge in like English history yeah. and our culture. And yeah, it's like very much a mystery man. And like, like we were saying earlier, like you were saying about like sharing a bed with someone, like sharing a life with someone that is like such a yeah. crucial part of who you are and then to, yeah and, then, and their work probably yeah, yeah absolutely I mean you you must bounce ideas off Dan and 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 your mates and whatever like we all do right but then you know when you're that much in someone's life it's like yeah I I have Caitlin like check my copy if I'm writing anything important. oh yeah right? yeah no like, I think if you're like if you're like living with someone and making something like whether you like whether you like share your material directly with them or not they're so like they're such an intrinsic part of your life but, yeah like like if someone was to write an autobiography about you and they or, or a biography and they left caitlin out of it that would be like fairly you know i would be contacting the publisher <laughs> being like excuse me <laughs> <laughs> yeah but another really interesting thing actually about shakespeare and hamlet is he wrote all through plague times like you were saying about that meme and um none of his plays ever referenced the plague yeah, not directly. And s- not directly. And s- like he was living through like an ongoing pandemic, basically. And his his work would constantly be like moved out of London and they would have to perform where there wasn't the plague and then come back in when it was like had the numbers were lower. And like 
people have kind of um, hypothesized or speculated that possibly the reason he didn't mention it directly is because his son died of it and it was so traumatic. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Again, who knows? We don't know but that's a good theory. Also, like, he's a good artist. Also, no, people don't want to fucking hear about exactly. plays, do they? I like, just... I don't want to watch a COVID-19 play Ugh. ever. Do you know what I mean? I can just I can just see it now next year, like this summer blockbuster, you know, and they've got the masks and it's like lockdown or whatever, you know, some bullshit. And it's like, why would Edinburgh Or it'd be like COVID that? the musical, like that will 100 percent go oh to Edinburgh. God, Edinburgh, and... Edinburgh already has 50 COVID to musicals. I can guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually running right now. <laughs> Is the fringe going ahead this year? Actually, it is, isn't it? It is apparently going ahead like in a much more scaled down version. Yeah, so I'm gonna. I think I'm probably gonna send some up, some stuff up virtually. We just got funding to re-record, like remount one of our shows Congrats. and kind of send it in like as a digital thing. But mm. I didn't really feel like it was worth going in person this year. No, it doesn't feel the same thing, does it? No, and like. Yeah, the audiences are going to be so restricted. And, like, it's great that they're doing something live and, like, yeah. hopefully it can be, like, really localised Scottish artists and Scottish audiences yeah. and maybe that will be nice for once. Yeah, right. Um, But I don't think it will be the same kettle of fish. No, and it's like, give me heroin or nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As they say. As they say. I don't know why we're coming up with these, <laughs> these aphorisms. <laughs> if you're the mousetrap, you can run. <laughs> It's been said, I mean, you know, four times in this conversation and no yeah. other time ever, but it's been said. <laughs> um, oh, I just realised we've gone over an hour. Are you, are you, are you nope. Yeah, okay? I should probably go at some point. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll start to wrap it up, I guess, rather than sort of making it a hard, like, bye. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what, else, what else can we talk about? You know what's something I've always wanted to ask you? Yeah. Um, your theatre company, Sunday's Child. Yes. Mm -hmm. um wonderful company lovely people good plays blah 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 blah. uh where does where's the name come from i was born on a sunday sunday's child that was it you know the poem like sunday's child is like Bond I love this. Great. Yeah, child Sunday's is... Child is basically just the best. Okay, one of them is terrible. <laughs> what is it? Is it That's like not how Wednesday? The poem goes. Wednesday's Child is full of woe. I remember so Wednesday's. She, is she full wouldn't of woe. be born on Wednesday. Um, but do they all, the child they all that's born on the Sabbath day is Bonnie and Blythe and Good and Gay. That's the kind of last line. So it kind of implies that Sunday's Child is. The best. Do you know the whole poem? Mm, no, Monday's Child is fair of face. Tuesday's Child. No, I'm making it up now. <laughs> it did sound like you. When's a child for Here we Thursday? Go. Child has far to go. I think is one of them. Let's have a look. If you wouldn't mind, in your finest. Oh yes, okay. Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Thursday's child has far to go. Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child must work for a living. <laughs> but the child that is born on the Sabbath day or Sunday, is fair and wise and good and gay. There we go. So there you go. Got it if you're on a Saturday. Shit one for Saturday, yeah. <laughs> All you got to do is work, mate. All right, that's what you get. That's what you get. Um, Born to work, mate. What a weird, what a weird, what am I? I know, what Hold a weird on. poem. Actually, like, honestly, I'm glad that people don't ask me about that often because it's not exactly a very glamorous <laughs> thing to have named my company after, like, a really weird basic bitch poem, but... <laughs> I wonder when I was born. If you had to guess what day of the week. You know me now. You know me. Be nice, but also yeah. be honest. Don't lie to okay. me. Okay. What day do you think I was born? Uh... What child am I? Am I full of grace? Have I got to work for a living? <laughs> what? what about Monday? Were you born on Monday? Fair of face. Oh, yeah. you charmer. Uh, Were you born I don't know. I'm, I'm looking it up now. No, you Tuesday. Need Tuesday. Tuesday yeah, evening don't... as well, so I'm quite close to being full of woe. Close, on the border. <laughs> I, <can't, laughs> I spent my life on the border of woe. A lot of um, all the young people these days are getting their astrology charts done. And don't you need to know, like, the day you're born, the date you're born. Think you got to so, combine. Yeah. yeah. We're so old, we haven't even bothered to get it done, Rob. We okay. could change our lives. No. Nah. <laughs> I read once that um, the, the star signs are based on, like, the positions of the stars, like, when they came up with astrology. So, like, right. hundreds or whatever, thousands of years ago, however yeah. old it is, a long time ago. It's like... The stars aren't actually in that position anymore. 
Like Rob's like, sorry, can I just interrupt this broadcast? Like, uh, astrology is not real. Uh, star signs, you know, they make them up in the newspaper columns. They just make them up. So, <laughs> yeah, I've honed in on the most <laughs> irrelevant aspect. You see, it's not scientific, but only for this reason. <laughs> It was really specific, niche, random reason. Well, Eva, do you have do you have a final thought, a message for me, for the listener, for the world? Um, get out, and enjoy the sun, if possible. It's really okay. hot today. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking the other day. I was like, I was, I was like, I was doing a thing. I was catastrophizing. I was like, oh my god, what if twenty twenty one is like as bad as twenty twenty? But then I was like, you know what? We've got a whole beautiful other half of the year like stretching in front of us. So I would say go forth, enjoy the sun and enjoy, enjoy all these lovely months that we have. That was, that was like quite a weird final closing statement, but do you know what I mean? Like, um, it's a beautiful thought. Yeah, don't catastrophize like I do basically. Yeah. <laughs> or if you find yourself catastrophizing, remind yourself to yeah. align yourself in balance a bit more. Yeah, and just like open the Metro, read your little astrology column. <laughs> check what's going on star sign wise and go from there yeah and if it says something nasty ignore it It never does does it no it <laughs> never like you are oh, what born 23rd of april 95 oh you're you're an insufferable <laughs> bastard you know <laughs> no hope for you <laughs> well it's been so lovely to have you on the show and also just to talk to you because it's always lovely to talk to you but thank you so much for coming on it's been really it great. was a real privilege and a pleasure Rob. Oh. Let's see each other soon in reality. Yes, um, IRL. In meat space, as they call it. Okay, great. <laughs> I'd like to weed you out just before saying goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just so when you hang up, you're like, he is a fucking weird. <laughs> what, a, what a weird guy. <laughs> All right, I will see you later. Okay, bye, Rob. Mwah. Thanks for having me. Adios. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the show. If you've enjoyed it, please give us five stars and consider becoming a subscriber and maybe even supporting us on Patreon. Really, really, really helps me continue making this show. Uh, If you haven't enjoyed it, then you can fuck off. Many, many thanks to Nils Hennis Steer for the amazing music and to Dave Fox for the cool artwork. Please keep coming back every week for more Bliss of the Abyss.